Hey YouTube. Okay, so we uh, we went ahead and made an underquilt with the Sierra Trading Post uh, down blanket uh, that is currently the closest thing to the uh, uh, replacement for the Costco throw blanket. Uh, just to show how important that Costco throw blanket became uh, to the hammock community and the DIY, the MYOG uh, community here. Uh, when I put that video out uh, that there was a replacement for the Costco uh, down blanket, uh, it got more responses, uh, more views on its first day than any other video I put out in the past six months. Uh, now that's saying something. There's there's a lot of interest there. Uh, got a little bit more information on the quilt, on the, the Sierra Trading Post quilt, uh, where the uh, Costco quilt was 750 fill power. Uh, the Sierra Trading Post is uh, 550. So it's, uh, you know, my suspicions are confirmed that it's not as an effective uh, quilt. It's heavier. Uh, the uh, fabric on the outside worries me a bit. Uh, so, uh, all in all, the, the, the best thing about that Costco quilt was that it's extremely adaptable. I've got like six, eight videos of stuff I did with it. If, if, if I could get that on a regular basis, I'd be making things every weekend with it. Uh, there's some more limitations on uh, this Sierra Trading uh, Post blankets. Too small for a top quilt. Uh, the fabric on uh, the one I received uh, is, uh, I, I worry about its uh, water resistance. Uh, has the same loft but with less fill power. So let me stop babbling right now. Let me thank everybody who watched that first video very, very much. I was very gratified to know that uh, the response is out there. Uh, so let's go ahead and make this quilt, then we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about it, okay? See you after the quilt is made. Okay, so what we're going to do here is, is we're going to use one of the uh, drawbacks of this thing to our advantage. And as I mentioned in the, in the first video, uh, the big problem that, I, that uh, I read on the reviews at Sierra Trading Post was that this quilt isn't, uh, it allows for a lot of down migration. See these little X's right here? Well that's all that's holding these two shelves together so the down can migrate all over the place. Well what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the width of this and we're going to reduce the length of it and increase the loft at the same time. We're going to get all the down from one side to drop down, we're going to run a line of stitching and then we're going to cut a few inches off of either side. So first thing we want to do is just kind of vigorously shake it so that all the down drops down to the bottom of this great big bag. And when we get that done, we want to set it down. get it as close to the edge of the table as possible so that we can make sure we get all of the down that we can. Okay, now for this next part, you might remember it from the uh, Costco down quilt. Now we're just going to make sure as much of this down as possible gets away from this first panel. So we're going to beat on it a little bit with this stick. Now, I'm going to make believe that this is Donald Trump. Now, I better not do that. I'll probably tear it up. Uh, Justin Bieber. Okay, here we go. So we're just gonna pat it a little bit just to make sure. Get gravity working for us. Get that done. And then I think what I'm gonna do is this is a 50 inch wide quilt. I'm gonna cut five inches off of either side. It saved me a little bit of weight there. Okay, what I've done here is, is I've scooched this blanket up just a little bit. I got as much down out of this edge as I could. I scooch it up until I about have about seven, eight inches. And then it's gonna come in here and make a couple of marks five inches down from the edge. I'm gonna get my straight edge. 
line them up with the other marks I made. And strike a line. That'll be my stitch line. Okay, so I'm going to take it into the gear bucket. I'm going to run a line of stitching along that line I just drew. Then I'm going to cut this five inches off. Okay, then I'm going to repeat the process on the other side. With me so far? Okay. Put a little bit of feathers sliding around there. Okay, there it is. Got both sides sewn up. We've got took 10 inches of material out of it. Five inches on either side. Okay. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to repeat the process with the end and get the down out of the ends. And then I'm going to fold the corner over about an inch. And then I'm going to fold the end over about an inch to make the end channel. We'll bring you a little closer here and show you that. Okay, so here's what I did. I folded it over at 45 degrees, about an inch or so, inch and a half, inch and a quarter, don't have to be exact. And then rolled it at one inch, about, all the way down the end of the quilt. Okay, did that on both ends. Now I'm going to take this in and I'm going to sew it down the entire length right next to this factory line of stitching. But what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to stop about an inch from the end. That's because we've got this ragged edge here where we cut it. And we just want to cover that up so it looks nice. So when we put our side channel on, we're going to run our side channel all the way to here and stuff it up underneath here and then finish that stitch to close it off. Okay? Alright, let's go let's go stitch this. Okay, so there you can see I've finished the stitch. If you look real close you can see where I back stitched it here. But I stopped that stitch a little bit away from here. And like I said when I come in and add the side channels We'll finish that stitch to hold that folded corner down. Okay, I've got it laid out here on this piece of uh, 1.6 ripstop. Uh, if you've seen the other videos on how to make underquilts and things like that, you've seen this material before. Uh, this started out as six yards of material uh, three years ago. Uh, I've used the heck out of it, so uh, I'm going to get some more. RR Trading Post on eBay is where I get this stuff. Okay, so I'm, I've got this laid out. I'm going to make sure I cut this material to length. i just set the quilt down. Left about a half inch proud on this end. I'm going to come over here and eyeball about a half inch past the end of the quilt on this end. That's going to be for the hems uh, that we put on here. Then I'm going to cut two strips five inches wide that length one will be there each one will be a channel a side channel am i me i'm babbling again ain't i okay two strips five inches wide one each for each side okay i'm going to hem the ends and then i'll show you what i'm going to do to make sure i get the length right okay see you in a few minutes okay so what i did was i took those two five inch wide strips into the gear bunker and I sewed about a, a quarter inch wide rolled hem on one end. Okay. And I take it back out here and I pin it to the other end of this quilt so that I can come in here and roll this to where it'll be the right length. Pin that 
and then take it into here, bunker, and sew it. Uh, once I get these hemmed, I'll take them and get the ironing board, and I will fold them in half, and then I will fold them over a half inch or so on either end and iron that as well. Okay, I'll show you what that looks like when we get back out here. Okay, just to show you what I did here, I took that five inch strip, I folded it in half, and I folded a little, folded it about a half inch on each edge, and then I ran a line of stitching one inch away from the edge, from the folded edge, all the way down. Okay, now that's the best way I've found to get a channel onto a quilt that's already made. Uh, we got a video coming out pretty quick on how to make a, a quilt from scratch uh, as opposed to uh, modifying an existing piece. We'll show you that here in about a week or so. Okay, so uh, we've got the channels on the ends. You can see that we've already got a little bit more locked in this. And we're going to get a little bit more because we're going to repeat this process of getting the down in, make sure the down is away from the edge. And then we'll put the channel on it and pin it. Okay, so we get you down here a little closer to show you what we're doing. Uh, this is that uh, channel I sewed. Eventually, that's going to be folded over at 45 degrees. Here's the side channel that I just got finished. Now we're going to push that up and make sure that I've got that seated right up against that line of stitching, okay? Can you see that? And I've already taken the down out of this side and pushed it out so that we've got as much down away from here. We're not going to sew through it. Now uh, I'm going to pin this all the way down. All the way down that edge. And then when I sew it, I'm going to lift this up. Sew it here with a back stitch. And I'm going to pull this back, fold it under, and complete the stitch I started here and do a little reinforcing nudge right about there. Okay, so here's what we have. Everything is done sewing here. I came in here and I finished this stitch coming across here after folding it 45 degrees. And I put a little bit of extra stitch in there to kind of make sure that that joint right there is real strong when I go pulling on it with the shock cord. Okay, now we've done all the sewing. We've got the channels on the ends, we've got the channels on the side. There's, there's one more challenge. I mean, we could hang this on a hammock right now if we wanted to. But there's one challenge we need to address. Uh, you saw that throughout this entire process, I was able to move that down from side to side, end to end, so that I could get a nice flat surface to sew on and to build up the loft in there. Well, that's going to happen when it's hanging on the hammock, and that's when you don't want it to. These little X's in here aren't enough to keep the down from floating back and forth. Now, uh, if this was a scratch-built down quilt, there would be baffles and channels in here that would keep that down from floating around. Uh, we're going to have to put our own in there. We can't get inside and add any baffles or anything. But we do have these lines as a guide. Uh, so what I'm going to do, and, and the challenging part about this, is to keep the down evenly distributed throughout the process of sewing the quilting in. So that's the first thing we want to do, is make sure that the down is fairly well evenly distributed throughout this entire quilt. Then we're going to take a pass of stitching without closing up the channel. And we're going to run it down and connect all of these X's on one side. 
Then we're going to fluff it up again. We're going to do it on the other side. Okay. Then we're going to come and then we're going to do these two. Okay. Each time we do that, we're going to bring it back out here and fluff it up to make sure the down is evenly distributed as best we can. We'll take a look at it then, but I think what we're going to need to do is also run another line of stitching down the middle of each one of these channels. Essentially, we would have a number of five inch wide channels here. Now, that still won't keep them down from migrating uh, a, a lot, but it should limit it somewhat uh, to be able to use this as a summer quilt. I'm going to go in and do that. When I'm done, we'll take it out here. You can see what it looks like. Okay, well, there it is. All the channels are sewn. Kind of looks like a quilt, doesn't it? Uh, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. Is it a $30 quilt? Yes, that's a $30 quilt. Uh, I'm going to take it in. Let's take it in and weigh it. Uh, see how much. We started out at about one pound, five ounces. We shaved a bunch of stuff out of it. Let's see if we saved any weight uh, by cutting that cloth off and see how much we gained back by adding the channels. We'll put the suspension on this and, uh, and talk about it a little bit. See you in a second. Okay, let's weigh this now. We started out at one pound, five ounces, and some odd uh, when we pulled it out of the package. It is now at one pound, 2.7 ounces, so we shaved somewhere in the neighborhood of three ounces off of that. Well, there you go. Uh, it actually makes a, a, a pretty nice looking little quilt, uh, and, and I gotta tell you that the uh, uh, I, I like the color scheme here, uh, the uh, olive drab with the tan and, and the uh, channels on here. It brings to mind, uh, the picture that pops into my mind is the M42 uh, down sleeping bag that we used to be able to get for like 4 or $5 from the surplus store back when I was just a young shaver. Uh, but let's talk about this quilt just a little bit. Uh, increasing the loft a little bit uh, should... Uh, increases performance. I, I checked the uh, the loft calculator on uh, uh, the Dream Hammock website, and uh, this, according to that, this is about a 45 to 50 degree quilt. Okay, now I'm going to consider it to be a 55 to 60 degree quilt until I do some testing with it. Okay, uh, currently it is a good summertime quilt. Uh, if you live in New England, uh, Wisconsin, you know, where the uh, temperatures get down to, uh, you know, 50, 60 at night during the summertime, even 70, even 70 uh, is, a, you know, that's when people start getting cold is at 70 degrees. Uh, this, is a, this will be a, a good alternative, okay? Uh, one of the things I, like I said, I'm concerned about this fabric, just the feel of it. There's no DWR on it that I, the propaganda says this, there's no waterproof finish. Uh, and it looks like this would wick moisture pretty good. That concerns me on two sides of this thing. On the outside, uh, particularly uh, in, in my climate, uh, with fog and, and, and other things like that, I'm afraid it may uh, absorb some moisture. Uh, that way or uh, splash back from uh, from rain uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a little uh, uh, undercoat protector for it uh, that'll snap to it uh, I'm going to edit this video and if it's not too long I'll add that to the end of this video uh, if it is if this video turns out to be longer than 15 16 17 minutes well then I'll just put it on another video what I'll do is I'll just measure the fabric and put some snaps all around it call that done on the other side of that, uh, where you're going to be laying up against it uh, in your hammock, uh, if you use it in real hot temperatures where you're going to get into it all sweaty, uh, I'm afraid this thing might start gathering up the funk pretty good. Uh, not a big issue, but it does say dry clean only. So uh, factor that into your decision making 
on this as to when and where to use it and what you might do to keep the sweat from soaking through your hammock and into your quilt and whether you even care about the funk. So uh, I'm not going to show you how to rig this thing. I've got plenty of videos out there that show how to put the uh, shock cord in the side and the end channels. I will say that uh, normally when I do an end channel, the uh, amount of shock cord I put in there is about 5-6 inches longer than the width. Uh, but this is only 40 inches wide, so I'm probably going to add you know a couple of feet to that length. So uh, 40 inches is about 4 feet. So I don't know, about 6-7 feet of cord for the end channels. Uh, and then fit it to my hammock and cut it cut off what I don't need after I've got it dialed in. Uh, twice as much uh, shot cord plus a foot for the uh, side channels. Okay? Did I confuse you? Because I think I confused me. Anyway, like I said, uh, if this hasn't gotten too long, I'll show you how to make that little underquilt protector. Otherwise, I'll show you how to make that little underquilt protector in another video. And, uh, We'll see you down the trail.